What is good, everybody, man? Welcome back into the Blue Bloods as we continue our FCS player spotlight for the 2023 season. And we are joined by new Murray State quarterback, Eric Phoenix, man, just transferred in for Benedict College, led Benedict to their first undefeated season in SEAC Conference Championship last season, and is looking to lead the Racers into a new age in the Missouri Valley Conference, man. Eric, appreciate you hopping on the show. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. You, your journey is interesting, man. You come out of a Windsor Forest High School. You earned Offensive Player of the Year your senior season. What was your overall recruiting process like coming out of high school? You know, it was, a, it was an um, amazing experience, you know. Had a, a lot of coaches come to the school, reach out to me, saying they like my family, they like what I do on the field, and say they they um very interested in me. So for me, I just took my time with it, tried to make the best decision for me, and later on the road, I found a bit in it, in college, showed me well, showed me the opportunity to come play football and compete for a championship. That's what that's what I decided to go at for the next four years. You you were in a unique position as well, man, because right after your true freshman season, there's a big coaching change at Benedict. This head coach Chinis Berry and his staff come in. Was that a difficult transition for you? Or just now looking back with hindsight, how did you handle that as a player? For me, I just knew that I had to work regardless, because the season before, I didn't have the season I wanted. So I know going to the next season. I know how to put some work in, get better, get bigger, stronger, faster, so I could co go play at the level I know I could play at. And Coach Barry, I feel like he's an amazing coach. He brought the energy, brought the juice, brought the passion. So I knew we were going to have a great season because I feel like he was, gonna, he was a great coach and a great leader. I got to I got to meet him for the first time, and I went down and covered the HBCU Legacy Bowl last year. And just that all the coaches gave like an intro speech to the media the first day. I don't think I, I was ready to run through a wall for him yeah. just in like the intro media messages. What was what was his pregame speeches like, man? I know you guys had to be ready to go. You know, like he's very enthusiastic. You know, so like he, uh, he really wasn't like for the pregame. It, it was motivational, but at the same time, he, he knew we were prepared, so it wasn't too much to say. He just let us know that we had 60 minutes to handle business. You guys went out, <clears throat> excuse me, won the first SEAC championship in school history in 2022. For you, when did, when did you know how special this Benedict team could be? So, I, I knew for the, for the moment I, I got the I arrived at campus in 2019, even the 2019 team, I know we had a lot of talent, a lot of Good players, key players. We was we play we play hard, play fast. We just we just work on finishing. And then the twenty twenty one season, you know, because COVID, really the COVID season, we really got coach came in, brought some new people in, and when we came practice in the spring, we was like a well machine. We were balling, flying around. Everybody was making plays. So I felt like we were gonna be something special. So heading into twenty twenty one season, I just knew we were gonna be good. We, had, we we dealt with some injuries to a lot of key um, positions, so that kind of messed up our season. But at the end of the day, we was in a lot of every game. It was, it was, we never got blown out in no game, so I always knew that we we had a good team, talented team, special team. So the 2022 season, I, I just told everybody, like, we stay healthy and we could do something special. That's the only thing I heard us the year before. So we came in the summer, worked hard, grinded, and I was, and I told them, boys, just all I do is just stay healthy, take care of our bodies, and just keep doing what we're doing. We're going to we get the goal we want. And look, surely do we not, by mid-season, everybody's healthy. Nobody had no big injury. Then we got later in the season. Nobody, nobody was still hurt. Everybody was healthy. We kept kept the same one and no mindset. And then week 11 came. We holding the trap, we holding the trophy in our hands. I, I know that was a huge team and to be in the record books in Benedict history, man, is the first team to achieve that. For you, though, coming to the offseason, you announced your entry into the transfer portal. What played into your decision behind your behind your entry into the portal and looking for another opportunity? So, like I said, I joined my time Benedict, you know, the historic season. As you said, winning the first championship in school history. It's a great feeling, so... For me, it wasn't an easy decision, you know. It took a lot of prayer, a lot of thought. I just feel like I wanted an opportunity to play the highest level possible, just set myself up for the future. So that's that's why I entered the portal. 
looking back now, before we get into your decision with Murray State, what was your overall interest in the portal and what were you looking for in a potential university? So it was for for my own experience, it was fun actually being recruited again. You know, a lot of coaches reaching out in conference, out of conference, D1, D2, FBS. So it was it was fun seeing how many coaches say like your film, watch you, say you didn't have an amazing season, want to take you out for a visit. So I really enjoyed that process. You know, I had a lot of had a lot of options to choose from. Uh, I just stay in prayer and just try to make the best decision for me. So I was looking I was looking for a program that I can that obviously I want to win another championship. It just helped me evolve to be a better quarterback, better leader and a better person. And just because ultimately I just want to play in the NFL. So I was looking for programs to also win for the team and help me get where I want to be at. Murray State's in a very interesting position, man, making that transition to the Missouri Valley Conference. So you just talked about your goals in the NFL. No conference has put more players in the NFL over the past 20, 25 years in the Missouri Valley. For you, though, looking at Murray State specifically, what was it about that program that stuck out to you? And, how, and what did, did was it your official visit? Was it talking to the coaches? What, what When did you know the deal was sealed for you? Yeah, so when I went on my official visit, uh, I really like the place. You know, they showed me a good time. All the coaches, Coach Hood, talked to him. I feel like we're going to have a great relationship. Coach Hodges, me and him, he's the OC there. Talked about the plays. I feel like we're going to mesh well, put up a lot of points and win. And just uh, when I talked to the players, it seemed like we were going to get along well. And it just seemed like a good fit. You know, they just kind of take care of your players, have your best interest at heart. And they also care about winning. I just feel like it's an opportunity there. So you got, got a good schedule, so you got to go out there and compete. And I feel like that's what we can go out there and do with the team. They definitely have a, a loaded schedule. And I don't think many people look at last season's uh, Murray State team and kind of forget this team's only only two seasons removed from winning the winning the conference championship and making a playoff run in that COVID season. When you you mentioned Coach Hodges, man, one of the bet one of the best offensive coordinators in the FCS. When you talk to him, how do you feel like your skill set fits into his offense? Yeah, I thought it fit very well because he was talking to me and saying saying that you could be a, a great asset to this team. I can see you taking over this offense. And also, some of the, um, it's very similar to what I ran at Benedict, so it's not going to be hard to comprehend or, or adjust to. So it's just different terminology. And I just, I just feel like me and him could connect well and just put up, put up numbers. When you look at your career, you're a two-time all-conference selection. You know what it's like to get to the playoffs, win a conference championship. What are your personal goals for the 2023 season at Murray State? So for me, I just feel like I just want to win every game on our schedule. So every every time we got an opponent, I'm looking to win. And two, also, my, my personal goal is All American, you know, Conference Player of the Year. Just just get just win as many games as possible and win another championship, win a national championship. Man, I love it, man. I know you guys are looking to make an impact year one in the MVFC. For you, though, looking at your career, I want to take a step back. True freshman Eric Phoenix, comparing to the guy that's about to take over from Murray State, what's the single biggest developmental change on the field that you've seen in your game from true freshman year until now? I'll say just like athleticism. So when my freshman year, um, I want to say I didn't take the weight room seriously, but I didn't take it as seriously as I needed, it, needed to. So I feel like when I got in the weight room, got bigger, stronger, faster, I felt like I seen my whole game change. Able to get out of sacks, able to run away from people, able to make all the throws on the field and just just be a, a game changer. So I feel like that helped me the most, just getting my body ready for um for college football. You know, shift into some to some like you know quick hitters to get to know you, man. When you look at your game, what, whether it's current or former, is there an NFL quarterback that you feel like your game models the most? No, I'll say Aaron Rodgers, Pat Mahomes, and Lamar. Really, Aaron Rodgers is my favorite quarterback. You know, I was looking at him ever since I was a kid. You know, I just like the way he played the game, like the way he throws. And Lamar Jackson, I like his competitive nature, like. We most of them had the same playing style, but I feel like as in mindset and like drive to win, 
So I'm, I'm at I'm at him precisely, and Mahomes, you know, Mahomes make crazy throws, just a playmaker, and just run around and make plays. I feel like that's what I do very well. Man, I've really liked that Aaron Rodgers comparison because when I watch your film, man, like the biggest thing for me is I think people underestimate just your athleticism inside the pocket in terms of ability to skate pressure. And that's the same thing with Aaron Rodgers. No one thinks of you guys as dual threat quarterbacks, but you still got the ability to get out of the pocket, move and, and escape pressure. When you look at your career, whether it happened at practice or in a game, what was your welcome to college moment, man, when you knew it was just going to be different at the college level? I welcome to college moment. I'll say – my freshman year, first game of the season, got thrown in the fire, like late in the third quarter. My heart was racing. So but um took the first now, I think I got a sack and then after that I was straight. I was I just felt like I needed to get hit. And then after that I was I was ready to play after that. So but but that was the moment right there. I needed I, I'll I love it, man. When when you look just at your game overall, man, is there if you, if you had to get a touchdown, one play, man, what's your go to favorite route to throw? Mm, touchdown. So it depends. I'm an empty guy. I remember this. We was I was at Benedict. We was it was in practice. It was a two minute drill, and it was a it was like a a two high two high cover two read. It was a cover two look. And, um, we ran. Double post for the inside slots and hitch on the outside for the three man side and, and the smash on the on the two by two side. I told the line, give me time, it's gonna be a touchdown. And sure enough was because the safety took the inside post and it was uh the second man post was open for the for the touchdown. Man, I, I don't think there's a more I don't think there's a more beautiful just like the the post route, especially with wide open man, and the ball hits him right in the hand. There's no there's the no better like aesthetically play than that man and for offense. When you look at just at your game overall, what's your favorite coverage to to face in a game? Yeah, I like man, I love teams playing man. man I, I like. I love that, man. To give some credit to the other side of the ball, looking back through your collegiate career, who who are one or two of the best defensive players you've ever had to face? Well, in practice, Luba Danellis, you know, my teammate back in Benedict, you know, Mr. All American. Very humble guy. You know, he don't like he don't like when we call him Mr. All American, but um <laughs> yeah, he was a fourth we record at practice, you know. He always in my face. I had to tell him to relax and throw the ball. You know, I'll say Pretty good. Well, I played. I, I played against um, Joshua Williams. The one I played for the Chiefs at Fayetteville State. Played against my freshman year. Pretty good, tall, lanky guy. Um, that's about it. I, I think those are both really good options. But I got to I got to see Joshua play down at I want to say the Senior Bowl when he came down to Mobile. Man, that. That kid was different coming from D2, man. But the final two questions are aimed more at the NFL, man. You, I know that's your ultimate goal. When you look, If an NFL franchise asks you what they're going to get in Eric Phoenix if they select you in one of the upcoming NFL drafts, man, what do you tell them? The first thing, again, is a winner because all my life I, I won. I know how to win. I know how to motivate my teammates. Also a leader. You know, I know how to motivate my teammates. I know how to lead by example, lead by um, I find solutions for problems that that needs to be fixed. And two, you just getting a quarterback that can make all plays on the field, make everything on the field, get you out of trouble, extend plays, improvise, and just and I'm also a per- person with a half of IQ. Understand the play the world, understand why the play works, why the play does not work, why the play should work in this coverage, why this why this play will work in this coverage. So that's why you get a jack of all trades. Quarterback who understands the game. Man, love that answer. And then the final question, man, you are a graduate of Benedict, man, and you'll also be representing Murray State this next season. What would it mean to you, looking at your journey, man, from going to Benedict to Murray State now to be the next player from either one of these two universities to hear your name called in the NFL draft? I feel like it would be an amazing experience, you know, especially as being an APCU grad, Benedict College alone. You no, know, I'll rep Benedict for life. Never, never forget Benedict. I appreciate all the, my, my four years at Benedict. Everybody that helped me get to where I am now. And then Murray State, I feel like we, me, and them, me and them, they will help me be everything I need out of life. So I just feel like I appreciate both of them.
man, Eric, I appreciate you so much, man. I'm excited to see what you bring to this Murray State offense. I know they're excited to have you at the quarterback position, man, as they move on to, to the MVFC in 2023, man. But this is all about player promotion. Let people know where they can find you on social media, contact you for an IL, and anything you want to promote or say to the people, man, this time is yours. Say it again. It kind of um, broke oh, up. Um, Oh, I'll just uh, let people know where they can find you on social media, contact you for an IL, and then just anything you want to promote or say to the people, man, this time is yours. Oh, so my, answer, my Instagram is underscore, underscore, E, the number seven, I, C, so underscore, underscore, Eric, but instead of R, it's a seven. And just that I'm excited to, for the next season, I'll come season, I'm going to go real hard, get ready to win another championship, go races. Man, I love it. I, I know all the Murray State fans are pumped for next season already. But, guys, make sure to go follow Eric. All social medias, man, you're not going to want to miss his journey to the next level. But, guys, for Eric Phoenix, for myself, and for the Blue Bloods, we are out for right now.